We've got a little extra time today since Pootie did all the Pootie calls. He did all the TriMet calls, rather, and um, it still took me about three hours. <laughs> you know, it's a major part of my entertainment package is those TriMet calls. Uh, but I do have a little energy left because I didn't have to go blind trying to find the calls. It's very hard for me uh, to do them because I have to, uh, I, first of all, I have eye problems. And second of all, you have to comb through all these files. And after a while, my I start going blind. <laughs> okay, I have eye problems and it gives me a headache. Uh, going through those calls is very time consuming. Anyway, uh, anyway, we're going to do a little bit of this. I don't know if it's worth anything to, to watch for me. Uh, I'll give it a little shot. Before we do that, we have a look. We have a, a group, a, a group for ATU, Nova Frontier, David Holland, and Elizabeth Buckwalter are running as a, what's the word, you, a group, um, vote for advocacy, communication, and transparency. I don't know any of these people. I've talked to Elizabeth on Twitter a few times. Um, break down the Mary's experience. Mary's website seen where? Oh, let's see. It. Has her list of experiences. In this article, I break down what that experience actually means and why it's not all cracked up to be. First, we'll talk 20 years of financial experience. She doesn't have a degree. Well, then you're no good. No degree, no good. This indicates office work. Let's see what she says here. Oh, here it is. Uh, I also have experience in accounts receivable and payable. I owned a business and worked for my dad's business. I prepped his quarterly taxes and a variety of other documents. I was only 19 years old. <laughs> Google was in his first year, so there wasn't a lot of sources for how to accomplish this. I was able to cut the amount of work she needed to do. Good for you. Which saved my dad money. <laughs> okay. This gave me the experience to oversee done it my own business. Let's talk about C-D-A-R-S next. I don't even know what that is. I found this article helpful in understanding what they are. What is it? Let's see. Certificate of Deposit Registry Service. What do you want? What do you mean what do I want? What do you want? Get out of here. I'm doing a video. Uh, simply, it's a method of deposit where large sums of money are spread across multiple banks to keep the sum under 250000 FDIC insurance. It's smart, but any banker worth a suit, suit salt would mention it. Okay. I'm not going to read it. Well, okay, it's not that much. Okay. Reporting current managers to ATU is her job. It's not experience. It's like saying, I open doors for your passengers. <laughs> the same is true for her next statement about submitting documents for the independent auditors. Okay, so she must be she must be wanting to go for the treasury, I guess. Treasurer. All right. That's nice. Okay, back. All right, and let's see. Where's the rest of it? So that's just one person. Where's is there any more? Mary. I see the pro who's where's the where's the other one? AT-757 needs change. We need real advocacy, communication, and transparency. Our union needs to modernize community. No more backroom deals. Yeah, right. We need to stand firm. Join our campaign. Okay, let's look at it. Let's click this. Elizabeth. Okay, here's Elizabeth Buckwalter. I've talked to her on Twitter. She's not so friendly to me. I, they don't like me. They think I'm against them, but it's not true. I'm not against you. But I'm not for, I'm not like, if you're going to be a dick or, a, you know, be a piece of shit behind the wheel, I'm not going to support you. I'm going to call you out. That's what I do. Let's see what she is. I'm interested in her biography. I'm a TriMet bus driver working vacation early. Oh, she's a stop, shop steward. She's been there five years and a steward for four. My year's experience in community service will be more than an asset to the union. I see the frustration, confusion, and even fear. I want so much for my union siblings to feel strong and confident at the difficult jobs we have. 
Twice now, I've been at an organization that was str similarly struggling with engagement. Twice now, I've helped build organizations into a thriving community. You can see it on Foster Boulevard. I want this union to thrive. I want to see us proud work again, proud of our work. I want us to feel of a family, advocacy, communication, transparency. My first task will create a budget committee, not just a, of union reps, committee of union members across the properties. The current finance secretary has listed a variety of investments where our money is stored. She stated that our finances have grown from the tens of thousands to two million. My first question is why? We say for any day, but it's been pouring the past year. We have union members out on sick leave, suspended. What's the point of saving our money if we aren't using it to actually help each other? That's a good point. I can only see no other reason for the amount. I wonder what's the secrecy around it. Okay, who is she? Secretary of Foster Area Business, Representative Faba Lentz, co-owner of State Technologies, Cookie Maven Girl Scouts. Okay, well, all right, well, looks okay to me, I guess. And now let's look at him. David Holland. Never talked to him, don't know who he is. I've been a service worker at Chariot. Oh, he's from Chariot. Wait a minute. Service Chariot is in the same union, right? Oh, okay. He, they are. I was born and raised in Salem, third generation. My experience running a small business and supervising teams of dedicated co-workers. I will work to increase transparency. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Strengthening the grievance process. Improving executive board. Yeah, okay, that's nice. And do we see her picture? That's Nova. That's a woman, right? My name is Nova Fortier. I'm currently a full-time driver. I'm running for... Oh, that's the president. Okay. One of the missing things is leadership is open communication with membership about things that affect our work. There have been several things happening in our union's leadership which have not been adequately communicated. If we do not have open communications and transparency, our local union leadership, how do we know they still represent us? As a lifelong advocate for working people's rights to decent wages, I am, in a previous position, I helped SEU 29 to unionize security agencies. I learned how to be diplomatic but firm in my organization. I became a powerful voice for those who I represented, protecting my co-workers' job from management's unfair targeting, manipulation, and other tactics that degrade the safety of the workplace. All through the pandemic, bus operators have been working without hazard pay, which is a disgrace, by the way. That's a goddamn disgrace that they didn't give you extra pay. Without additional time off to maintain their health and without support, management moved quickly to work virtually, yes. They stayed home during the most dangerous times, but expected us to go out every day. That's the fucking truth. Exposing us to the new deadly virus, virus without adequate PPE for weeks. That's all true. Management didn't limit the number of people we picked up until nearly a month into the pandemic. Our lives were at risk while they work from home. That's the, that's the fucking truth. It's disgraceful. It's time to reclaim our union. We deserve better than Shirley Block and John Hunt. <laughs> We deserve leaders who will advocate for all of us. I look forward to working with Dave Holland and Elizabeth. Okay. There you go, folks. Uh, here's Henry. I like Henry. He's my man. But Bruce, Bruce, where's Bruce? This is Keith, by the way, right here. This guy we hear on the scanner all day long. Where's Bruce? Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Here he is. He was a president. I turned against him because he gave away our fucking retiree benefits. I like Bruce, though. He's a nice, very nice guy. I don't know how anybody could not like Bruce. That was always his problem. He's too fucking nice. Come on, Bruce. Your website's not loading. Here it comes. Our members have been exposed to takeaway after takeaway after while well, represent. Main to string, main uh, communication. Well, Bruce, exposed to takeaways. You were there for some of those takeaways, Brucey. 
There is a strong divide within our membership and a need strong representatives that will work hard on building strong communication. Bruce understands the harm that's taking place due to poor representation. One thing I'll say for him, he has already been in that job. So he's got experience and maybe he'd be better this time than last time. And they like him. The management likes him, which counts for something, I think. Uh, and, you know, I guess uh, I haven't seen any material from Ryan v Vicken. Ryan Vicken, he's running for, uh, let's see. Where is he? Yeah, he's vice president. You know, I don't know if you've been following his fights with the management. But he's proven he's not scared of the management. And for that, I would give him my vote. Anyway, I, I don't know who I'm voting for. Well, yeah, I'm going to vote for Henry. Because I, I think he's the best. Uh, I don't know about the other offices yet. I don't really know. I have nothing against Shirley. No, but we need a little bit more articulate president than that. You know, I like Shirley. She's She's been a real advocate, but we need somebody a little more articulate than her. Anyway, I'm not here for this. How much time have I wasted on this? 11 minutes? Shit. All right, let's get on to this. Financial Planning Lunch and Learn with Shirley from ICMARC, soon to be Mission Square. And she will talk a little bit more about that. Um, Come on, Deanne. Why don't we get to see your little cute face up here? She, she won't show us her cute little face. I don't know why. She joined us uh, back in February, and she did a very general overview of the website and all of its resources and educational tools and calculators and everything. And um, it was very well attended. We had a really good response. And so we're doing this again, and she's going to step it up a bit. She, this is kind of an advanced one. She's going to talk about other cool things that you can do. Um, feel free at any time when you have a question just to plop it in the chat box. Um, yeah. You can send it to me directly, Deanne, uh, and I will keep track of them, and we will grill Shirley with all of our questions after she's done with her presentation. And with that, I will hand it over to Shirley. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Deanne. Uh, my name is Shirley Brost. I'm your local retirement specialist for ICMA RC. And as Deanne mentioned, we are changing our name. So after 50 years of being in the business with the name ICMARC, um, we have decided to kind of update our brand uh, to something that reflects who we are. They're rebranding themselves. I wonder why they're doing that. And our values a lot more. Most people are, don't even really know what ICMA is. And so, you know, a long time ago, that was a very meaningful meaningful name in the government sector, but it, it really doesn't mean a lot to a lot of folks anymore. Uh, and it doesn't really roll off, the, off your tongue either. So um, we did a lot of work, and we came up with our, our new name, which is going to be Mission Square Retirement. And the reason we chose Mission is because we are a not-for-profit organization. So our charter dictates everything we do. We're on a mission to help government employees. And that's exactly what we do. We don't work with the yeah. public sector. We don't do 401k plans. We, um, we couldn't work with Intel and help them. And we only work with government employees and their spouses. Um, so uh, it's definitely retirement-based. It's definitely a mission. And, and Square, that's just because, the t you know, at the center of every city or town, there's a town square. And that's really where great people and great ideas, you know, gather. Um, so that is going to be our, our name. You're going to start to see that a little bit here and there. And it will probably be on your statements, I believe, in June. So... Um, we're really excited about that. So much better than what we had before. So <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, today is uh, May 5th, 2001. So I, I know we're recording this. We're going to put it up on the website. Um, it might. I'm going to estimate it might be good for about a year. 
Uh, we're always working to update our website to make it better and better and better. So um, if it's been more than 12 months, you might find that some of the information is not relative, relevant anymore. Um, so let me get um, jump in. I'm going to send Dan a document, and I could email it to anybody who wants it uh, to show you how to, to set up your account and log in, although I think we covered that a little bit in the first presentation that is available to you. Um, just go to the website, which is www.icmarc.org, because the ORG, we're not for profit. Um, you, uh, the first time around, you're going to go into login, set up your online access. Do not click on enroll in your right, who cares? 106. I'm not watching. Is this, um, so, Dan, Oregon Purse has <laughs> your problem. So, Chris does not allow I don't you to care about that. this. Um, thank you very much. But I don't give a shit. into another Roth IRA. All right, forget it. Let's, uh, since I've already turned it on, let's, uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's listen to some calls that Jason just sent me. This is our, <laughs> where is it? This is D. Williams. <laughs> Steve Williams on the radio, she's, uh, yes? Uh, he's got an explosive temper, you know. Will you please not bother me with that now? I don't want to hear about that. Well, you tell me if he's going off. Okay, get out. He's flying off the handle. You got to let me know. I will let he, he, he go away, please. He's Thank, not. No, get, go away. All right, this is D. Okay. I'm not sure if the trainers are doing CMS testing out here, but this is getting ridiculous. That is unsafe when they're acting like they don't hear our horn. We need a hand signal. That's <laughs> D. She's a shit stirrer. Okay, was a uh, trainer at the Holgate platform? If the trainers are with the lockers, I had high horn at least six times, and it was close enough, and this freeway is not that loud. We cannot be testing like that in high-speed areas, etc. Okay, here's a response. 27411. Um, we're not doing any testing. We're just observing the track walkers, and we did not hear her until she got like two cannery rules away. From her. It is very hard to hear out here, and that's why we're here trying to figure out how to help our operators um, do this successfully. <laughs> okay, here she is. D. Eighty-six, and they need to keep their eyes open as well. <laughs> Send in the white shirt. Eighty-six, go ahead. Almost in the gateway. I'm sorry. Is there a supervisor who can take over this train for a few minutes? I need to, uh, um, I, I'm still in shock about this walking. Uh, let me grab my stuff, and then uh, I have fit for duty starting at 10 o'clock, so we'll need to get those done somehow. Yeah, all right. And there's a few. Let's do a few select Cooey calls here from today. Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's, let's listen to this one. 7241 at uh, Clark Center. Hey, 7241, I got your operator ill. What's going on? So, uh, about three weeks ago, I had surgery on my thumb. It was a work-related thing. Um, came back to work on Monday, and uh, I've been working like 12, 13-hour days. Um, my my thumb is really hurting, and I'm, I'm wondering if uh, I return to work too early. Um, it doesn't hurt when I'm not driving the bus. I don't know if it's, you know, which action it is, but it's it's hurting, and I'm afraid that I'm maybe uh, going to re-injure it. Um, uh, I mean, I can still drive, but um, I, I feel like I, I, I need to talk to my surgeon. Okay, I copy. Um, do you want me to call medical for you? 
No, um, I mean, like I said, I'm not, you know, I, I, there's nothing wrong except that my left thumb, using my left thumb is, is really hurting me, um, and, um, uh, I, I'm concerned that this work-related injury is going to be re-injured if it hasn't already. Okay, I understand. Um, are you wanting to mark off then? Uh, yes, can, mark off. Um, we can get you taken care of that way, or did, how are you feeling? I, I mean, like, I understand that it hurts when you drive, so maybe we shouldn't have you drive, and you're worried about it being re-injured, so of course we don't want that to happen either. So, um, would you like me to uh, contact the station agent for you, and we'll get you marked off? Yeah, I think so. I think I think I need to um, talk to my surgeon before I do any before I um, do any more. I I I really suspect that um, they sent me back to work. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to hem and haw. Just say you want to mark off. Your thumb is hurting, and that's that. You don't need to get explain to them. You know, I know, I know they're your employer. I was in your position. I know it's hard to say no to your superiors, but just say no. All right. What else? Oh, here's a good one. Blow your blow your eardrums out. Eight zero three four thirty three zero nine. Thirty three zero nine. How can I help? Well, I'm I'm not sure you can. Um, about every. 15 minutes or 20 minutes, my speaker just screeches a loud, <laughs> high pitch sound, and it's like, I, I can hardly hear now. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's amazing the amount of torture that's meted out to operate these different, you almost think they're psyops, because there's really no excuse for the level of torture that the TriMet operators are subjected to. I mean, it's it's incredible to me that the doors on the buses, you know, you're trying to go keep a schedule and then the doors don't work and you have these fucking passengers looking at you like there's something wrong with you. And this is, this is all constant, that door issue. I mean, that's disgraceful that these brilliant geniuses at TriMet can't get the doors to work. And then there's this head signs. You know, I was there working there when they implemented the automatic signs. I, I let's see, I've been gone ten. It must have been what eighteen? Who knows what? It was a long time ago. I've been gone ten years, and I guess they were there five years while I was there. And they never worked. They never worked. They were always like there was always instances of signs getting stuck, and you couldn't. Make, and they never figured that out. So you're talking 15 years they've had to fix these problems, and they don't fix them. So what's why? Why why are they allowed to run this shabby ass transit system like this? You know where you can't. Your fucking buses don't even work. It's disgraceful. Let's see here. Find another one. <laughs> I gotta keep all this. Seventy three thirty seven. I have a passenger that just told me she was going to kill me and um she's getting off the bus, so you can disregard. Yeah. She's what? Okay. Um are you doing okay after that? My door is closed, so I'm gonna just sit here for a moment and collect myself. Okay. Yeah, fun. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> okay, listen to this guy. I call this guy Mr. Enthusiasm. Well, good morning, 1703. <laughs> he answers the fucking radio like that every fucking time. Okay, this driver's got having some problems. 2234. 2234, I got your operator ill. What's going on? Oh, uh, this last 22 trip, I've had this major bad, bad bloody nose. And I made it through half that trip back over here to Gateway late. And I don't know how I'm going to keep doing this because I can't wear a mask. I can't get it to stop. And I think I should just go home and 
Yep. See what happens or how I get at the stop. I don't know. Go home. Go home. All right. Oh, yeah, here's a drama. These drama, we, we hear these, a dozen of these a day. Yeah, 30, 34. 30, 34, how can I help? Do you have a supervisor or a fair inspector somewhere near uh, Lake Michigan Drive? I got a lady at the well, first of all, won't pay her fare. And secondly, she leaves her mask down, and mm -hmm. uh, she's got it up now, but I'm sure it'll come down here again in a few seconds. Okay, neither of those things should bother you. Okay, you have your mask. You're in a you're in a compartment. Your pay is not contingent upon them paying the fare. You shouldn't even think. I know, you know, in 20 years of driving the bus, never once thought of actually making an issue out of a fare. I never it never occurred to me ever to actually make somebody pay a fare or to make an issue out of it. Just just stupid. It's just stupid. You're creating unnecessary problems for yourself and the same things with the mask and the mask you know I'm, I'm beginning to think the whole mask thing was another i mean everything in our life is a psyop now everything everything that's happening to us is to fuck with our heads and this mask thing is another one i mean why didn't they just say it's voluntary because it is voluntary why do they have to go around saying it's mandatory and then not enforce it that's a psyop so they, they planted a seed in the public's head and then they, they fuck with their heads because they never intended to enforce it. So it was voluntary. So these are all government. This is why government is our arch enemy. I mean, the U.S. government is our arch enemy. Everybody in the government, whether it's Trump or Biden, is your arch enemy. They're, they're only there to steal from you and fuck with your minds. Um, all right, I'm not going to go. For Let's see. Okay, I'll do a couple more now. 2037, Coffee Start, and so 17 is heading in now. Oh, 2037, I got your love verbal. Do you have one? I've asked him to exit the bus. He's calming down now because we heard the song, but he's just yelling at me because I asked him to wear a mask, and he's just getting louder and more verbally abusive. Now, don't you know, see? Give it up! Give it up! We hear a dozen of these a day. Okay, of people getting in, getting fucking in shit because of this mess. But apparently the management doesn't communicate this to the operators because they call in and they go, oh, that's interesting that we can't do anything. They don't even know. It's fucking crazy, man. All right, this is the deke here. And God love the deke. I love the deep, but some of his ideas are not. 3306 at the garage. Okay, I'll be out. Well, I had to uh, pick up this guy in a wheelchair who's uh, unknown on this route. Uh, he has lights. He has open sores on his feet. He's filthy from being on the street. No telling what kind of diseases he has, and he was uh, him a ride because there was another ADA passenger there, and I he wouldn't take no for an answer. He's a, a rolling biohazard. Anyway, long story short, he was on my bus, and uh, there's some substance on the floor. I don't know if it's from his feet or what. Uh, you know, it's your job to pick these people up, okay? Your job is picking up the dispossessed and those people in the ditch. And when I worked there, we, I don't ever remember denying anybody a ride because they were a biohazard. I don't even remember that being an issue at the 10 years ago and further. I don't think, I don't think anybody ever did that. I don't remember. I don't remember that. I know my memory is not so great anymore due, due to various external factors but i know it wasn't an issue okay when somebody pissed on the bus you just roped it off if somebody shit on the bus you just roped it off they didn't take the buses out of service and i don't ever remember denying people service because they were biohazards it's never 
This is something that's only been happening in the last few years. I mean, there, you know, you can't do that, okay? You can't do that. That's like saying you can't walk down the, the public transportation is funded by the taxpayers. And it's available to everybody without exception, unless they're like a violent or a trimet barber type guy. Somebody who's in the ditch and is filthy dirty because of being in the ditch. You can't just leave them there. You can't do it. What do you think you're doing? How, how come that's even allowed? It's allowed because we have a government that doesn't care about people. It's all self-absorbed. Anyway, I disagree with him about that one. Now, the next one is, and I agree with Deke on this one. 3306, Monterey. 3306, go ahead. Uh, just for the record, I'm kind of steamed that uh, my life uh, could be in danger from somebody who could possibly have a staph infection. Yes, the cleaner came in and did his thing. Uh, but I just want to lodge a complaint. If I say that a bus is not, that has been contaminated, and I get told that we don't have buses to trade out, I feel marginalized. I, I feel like they all let me down. And he's got a good point. If you if you want a new bus, why won't the management oblige him? It, you know, I, I don't understand the management obsession with not trading operators when they have buses. They have extra buses. The, the service is still cut 10%, which means they have 60 extra buses. Okay, there's 600 buses. They cut service 60, uh, 10%. So there should be 60 extra buses at all times. So what's the issue with trading the bus? I mean, they may have always made a big deal out of that. If it makes your operator happy, why don't you do it? Why can't you do it? There's no excuse for not doing that. Okay, that is a very good example of how you're not a valued employee, how all this talk about you being a hero and being valued is, is nothing but words, and you see factually that play out in a situation like this. You can see he wants a bus. It would make him happy to have a bus. Give him the bus. It doesn't cost the management anything. But yet, they won't do it. And he's got a very valid point. This is management mar marginalizing you and treating you like a slave. All right. Well, that's enough of this. I don't uh, want to get go past this amount. 